Welcome to a brand new section of the course, the language, Scalar. The objective of this section is to think in a functional programming way. As good data architects, here we will understand collections. We will learn about iterators in Scalar and more functions with Scalar. Now, let's move on to the first video of the section, Scalar Collections, the hierarchy and the factors in the selection of a scalar. In this video, we will learn the basics of Scalar Collections. Scalar collections are different from Java collections and Spark collections. So a list in Java is different from a list in Scalar. Lists are a fundamental part of functional languages. The first functional programming language, LISP, is an acronym for list processing. We have to master three key concepts for functional programming to understand Scalar collections. Predicates, literal functions, anonymous functions, and implicit loops. A predicate is just a function that receives several parameters and returns a Boolean value. For example, a literal function is an alternate syntax for defining a function. It's useful when we want to pass a function as an argument to a method, especially to higher order functions such as a fold or filter operation, but do not want to define a separate function. For example, the previous function can be rewritten as when examining this code, it's helpful to think of this symbol as a transformer. It is important to know that it's a keyword used for function types and function literals. The expression evaluates the parameter list on the left side of the symbol, in this case, an int named i, into a new value using the code on the right side of the symbol. The same function could be written as. Combined with the filter method, we can find different expressions, so let's run the scalar command prompt. You can see the list of 10 numbers. Also, this is another expression we can run. You can get the odd numbers now. As we can see, in the third concept, this code is equivalent to a loop. The filter code could be rewritten using a for loop over the collection. But here we are elegantly functional programmers and we avoid loops. First, we will start with Carter 1, the collection's hierarchy. In the beginning, there existed traversable and its family characteristic is the implementation of the for each behavior. Traversable only has one descendant, iterable. A characteristic of the iterable behavior is the implementation of the iterator method. Iterable has three children, sequence, set, and map. SEQ, an abbreviation of sequence, is our first heroine. She has three main children, indexed sequence, linear sequence, and buffer. What is sequence? The sequence hierarchy has three main families, indexed sequence, linear sequence, and buffer. Indexed sequence. This implements the random access of elements in an efficient way. We can say ARRI365, where ARRI is an array, and we can access the 365th element of ARRI in this way. Linear sequence. This is the implementation of a linked list, as we all know it in the functional world. We have three fundamental functional list methods, head, tail, and is empty. Buffer. This allows updates on existing elements, insertion, removal, and the efficient addition of new elements at the end of the buffer. The two most common implementations of buffers are list buffer and array buffer. Next is map. Map is a collection of key value pairs. This popular data structure in the Java world is called map. In Ruby, it is known as hash, and in Python, it is called a dictionary. When we need an immutable map, we create it without importing it. So we will do that now. The map is created here. Next is set. A set is a collection of unique elements. Its behavior is similar to the Java set. Operations on sets fall into four categories. Tests. That has contains, apply, subset of. Additions has plus one element and plus plus another set. Removals that are minus one element and minus minus another set. Classic contains union, intersect, diff. It without importing it. Let's do that. An immutable set is created using this collection. Next is Carter 2, choosing the right collection. As we have seen in Scalar, there are just three types of collection, sequence, map, and set. 
The crucial decision is whether we want a mutable or an immutable collection for each type. Sequence. The decision here is whether we need an indexed sequence, such as an array, or a linear sequence, such as a linked list. Let's see each in detail. Mutable collection can be updated or extended in place so we can change, add, or remove elements of a collection as a side effect. Immutable collections never changes, so we still have operations that simulate additions, removals, or updates, but in each case return a new collection and leave the old collection unchanged. In the case of indexed sequence, the table gives the details. In the case of linear sequence, this is the information. Immutable collections never change after they are created, so we can rely on the fact that accessing the same collection value repeatedly at different points in code and time will always yield a collection with the same elements. All modification operations on immutable collections return a new instance with an operation applied. In the case of indexed sequence, in the case of linear sequence, Mutable collections are known to have some operations that change a collection in place. So, dealing with them means that you need to understand exactly where, which code, changes which collection, and when. This is an aberration for functional programmers. Map. Consider two decisions. Do you want it mutable? Do you want elements sorted? Let's view this in tabular format. Fundamental operations on maps are similar to those on sets. Lookup operations. Apply, get, get or else, contains, is defined at. Additions, removals, subcollection producers, keys, key set, keys iterator, values, values iterator, returns different collections of keys. Transformations, filter keys and map values, produces a new map by filtering and transforming an existing map. Next is set. The same two questions apply. Do you want it mutable? Do you want elements sorted? Let's view this in tabular format. Mutable sets also provide add and remove as variants of the operators, addition assignment, and subtraction assignment. We can replace a mutable collection stored in a val with an immutable collection stored in a var and vice versa. So, we got an introduction of scalar collections. Great!